next on the Met Report, an event to give free legal advice to undocumented students. And President-elect Donald Trump is making announcements on cabinet picks. Hey, coming up later. Sports, find out how the volleyball team did in the RMAC Championship. The Met Report starts now. Heights University on the Loretto Heights campus has announced they will be closing their doors. This shortly after falling out an agreement with MSU Denver. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sarah Turner. And I'm Avery Anderson. The partnership with MSU Denver didn't work out and a lagging enrollment has led to the decision to close the campus. Colorado Heights plans to help the 500 students continue their education after the closure next year. The Ohio State University shooting that occurred Monday left many students at the Auraria campus uneasy. The Auraria campus is prepared for an active shooter situation as 35 emergency services across Denver participated in different drills and scenarios on campus in August. After Monday's shooting, President Jordan sent out an email reminding students that they can make an appointment with the Counseling Center if they feel the need to do so. The Auraria campus has also set up a text-to-tip system for students to safely report any suspicious activity on campus. About 50 people moved into Denver every day, making Denver the fastest growing big city in the country. The Met Report went out to see some effects of the new population growth here in Denver. As Denver's population increases at such a rapid rate, some of our resources will start to reduce, changing the way we live our everyday lives. Water in the Denver area is relatively scarce in that we only get about 15 inches per year of water, uh, meaning snow and rain put together. And because of that, we're concerned that if population continues to increase like it does, we will run out of water. But it's not as simple as using up the quantity that we have, because sometimes what happens is we also pollute the sources as the city grows, becomes more affluent. The best thing to do in the Denver area is to conserve the water that you use. Try not to take really long showers and baths. Try not to wash your car too much. Don't over-irrigate your lawn. Um, don't leave the tap running when you don't need to leave it running. For our Auraria campus here, I think one of the best things to do is raise awareness of the problem so that people take the knowledge with them when they leave campus. Because even if our campus does okay, because people only use so much water while they're on campus, they really need to, to take what they've learned home and, and restrict their water use there. Nearly two billion people worldwide drink unsafe water, so let's remember to preserve our water here in Denver. For the Mayor Report, Isabella Munoz. I'm reporter Charisma Hicks here with your weather. Today we are currently sitting at 32 degrees with a high of 36 degrees. Our winds are moving in the northwest direction at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight is the 9 News Parade and currently we are in the 30s. Around 5 p.m. we will stay in the 30s, but towards the time the parade will start, we will go down to the 20s, so you will need a hat, a scarf, a coat, and something nice and warm to drink that will help you bear the cold. Um, we. Today our high is 45 degrees with a low of 19 degrees. Colorado's record high during December is 73 degrees while the record low is negative 6 degrees. Our snow showers on average are about 8.5 inches and I'm really hoping that we don't see that anytime soon. Coming up I'll give you more details on this cold weather we are supposed to get this weekend as well as the snowfall coming this Tuesday and later your five day forecast. Thanks, Charisma. The Here to Stay event is taking place on Saturday. The event is open to students and members of the community. It will focus on providing legal advice on how undocumented students should proceed with their DACA status. Juan Arellano is one of the students who is leading the event with more. Yeah, guys, we are here with Maria Torres, an organizer for an event here on campus. Maria, tell us more about this event. What do you guys hope to achieve? Okay, so our main purpose for this event is um, to make sure that every DACA student or undocumented student that we have on campus and surrounding campuses, um, including high schools, are aware that there are services for them and making sure that we give the correct legal advice, um, for especially for undocumented students, to make sure that they're on the right track and know what to do um, with the results of the election. You guys have sponsored many events in the past weeks, especially after the presidential elections. So how, has, how do you feel that the Aurora campus has responded to that? 
Um, Aurora Campus has actually responded really, um, they've been very supportive about us. All three schools have hosted events, making sure that students feel welcome, making sure that students feel safe, um, and making sure that students feel the support here on campus. And definitely this is one of the tri-institution events that we're, trying, that we're hosting this Saturday, just to make sure that um, students are aware and making sure that we give them all the resources they need. So it's been a really good um, turnout with the, with the three schools. Why is it important to make students feel that they are supported, especially if they are DECA or RACET? Um, on this campus, we do have, I think, one of the highest um, number rates for undocumented students, um, especially DACA, um, just with their history being first to accept ASET. Um, so definitely we feel like an obligation to make sure that our students keep feeling safe and making sure that they're still encouraged to go to school um, and keep enrolling to school and making sure that they feel safe on their campus and that they belong here. Finally, who can attend this event and where is it going to take place? Um, this event is open to the community, um, so not just here on campus, but it will be open to families also. Um, and it's open to high schools, families, anybody in the community that wishes to know more about what DACA is. Um, even if they hold illegal status or not, um, it's basically an event that we want to put everybody together and make sure that everybody's on the same page and that we can work together and just kind of help everybody, that all the DACA students and undocumented students especially. All right, well, thank you, Maria, for taking your time to speak with us. Thank you. Uh, back to you guys at the studio. Thanks, Juan. Aurora students get ready to celebrate the upcoming holidays as MSU puts on their annual concert, Holiday Card to the City. This year's concert is sure to spring you into the holiday spirit as the Department of Music features pieces by the MSU Denver Festival Choir with MSU Denver Symphonic Bands. Join this festival of tunes on December 9th and 10th at 7.30 p.m. in the King Center Concert Hall. Be sure to get your tickets early as this concert is known to sell out fast. Tickets are available at the King Center box office or online at aheck.interticket.com. The season of giving is finally here and the Auraria campus has the perfect way for you to show your loved ones how much you care. Element Auraria is helping students get in touch with their creative side during the holiday to make your own holiday card workshop. Festive decorations will be provided and your final creation will be sent to you. The event will be held at the Tivoli Turn Hall on December 8th from 2 to 4 p.m. It's that time of the semester again and finals are just one week away. The final exam schedule is available online through the AHEC website. You can access the schedule and locate your course final exam date and time through ahec.edu by searching for your classes through their master calendar or by typing in the subject prefix and course number. For example, typing in ENG1020 for English 1020 in the keyboard box or by simply searching your CRN or class name. It is also a good idea to confirm the final date with, and time with your instructor. I do think that is a good idea because I don't really pay attention sometimes to those dates, so mm -hmm. I might not even show up for a final if I didn't know. You know, I'm usually pretty good about planning things in my planner and keeping track yeah. of things, but I'm glad we have something And like they that. change so much, so you, know, you never really know what's going to happen. Especially with, with professors on campus. Right. <laughs> well, when we come back, changes to the HOV lanes that may have you looking for an extra passenger. Redemption is the greatest gift of all in the holiday tradition, a Christmas carol. Ebenezer Scrooge could use a lesson in holiday spirit. Luckily, three ghosts are about to help him discover the true meaning of Christmas, whether he likes it or not. Follow him on a must-see musical journey through one magical night full of dancing, drama, and fresh starts. See it at the Stage Theater November 25th through December 24th. Visit denverscenter.org for tickets. Tune in every Friday night at 7 p.m. on Denver Channel 58 or MyMetMedia.com. Drop that baby. <laughs> My name is Pat Tobin. I am a cancer survivor of 27 years and I had breast cancer because I lost my husband to cancer, my mother, my grandfather, an uncle, and two aunts. And I relay so that research can find a cure for all of these things soon. My name is Susan Scarlett. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I relay for me and just to get the word out for relay and to raise money, we need to find a cure. Entertainment can be hard to find, but not when you tune in to watch E-Met. Watch E-Met every Friday for celeb dishes, funny news, Denver events, 
and awesome exclusives, not to mention great theater and movie reviews. Get caught up anytime on Facebook and Twitter, only on The Met Report. President-elect Donald Trump has chosen Elaine Chao as the Secretary of Transportation. If confirmed by the Senate, the wife of current Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell would oversee any infrastructure projects, which is a priority of Trump's first 100 days in office. The Tiwanzi immigrant has gained experience serving as a member of Trump's Asian Pacific American Advisory Council during his campaign and working as the Secretary of Labor during both terms of Bush's administration, making her the first Asian American female cabinet member in U.S. history. With the Denver homeless sweeps taking place just a couple of weeks ago, more efforts are being put forth to, forth to decrease the number of homeless people on the streets. Governor John Hickenlooper is proposing new efforts to battle homelessness in Colorado with marijuana tax dollars. His budget request for fiscal year 2017 to 18 asks lawmakers to put $12.3 million in annual marijuana revenue towards constructing new housing units for people who experience chronic homelessness. His proposal also includes another $6 million a year for housing low-income residents and others with mental health needs. The approach is a first for the administration as new studies show Colorado's homeless rate is increasing at one of the higher rates in the nation. Another way Denver is helping the homeless is through a new program that helps homeless people earn money for the day. The Denver Day Work Pilots program is a newer program designed to help give work that requires little to no barrier work experience to the homeless community. This program is funded by different partnerships between services like Denver's Road Home and Denver Parks and Recreation. The outreach team of Denver Day Works recruits experiencing homelessness and helps address them for job readiness and works assign them to appropriate position. Participants are paid the same day and offered financial planning at no cost. Participants are also offered services for shelter, food, and other necessities. While population is at a constant rise in the Denver area, new changes are developing as the new year approaches. The high occup occupancy vehicle rule that lets two occupants ride free on the express lane through congested areas on the US 36 and Interstate 25 will now require at least one more rider to claim that privilege. This change is de designed to ease congestion during high traffic times. Vehicles that try to exercise HOV privileges with only two occupants after January 1st will be fined $250. The state hopes the new rule will encourage commuters to take steps to ensure the fastest and least expensive way to travel. This weekend, classical music is fusing with hip hop to bring the annual Red Bull Flying Bach event here to Denver. Hip hop and classical music are not always the first things that come to mind when you think of collaboration. You would think that the smooth and sweet sounds of classical music would not mix well with the sharp and fast paced style of hip hop. But that is exactly what the Red Bulls Flying Bach does, and does it perfectly. I think it's a show that you haven't seen. I think uh, I think if you like classical music, you would you would uh, find it interesting yeah. to to come maybe from the music. And this is something we have seen as well that a lot of grandparents are coming because they they love classical music, and they're bringing their grandchildren because the grandchildren likes hip hop or breakdance, <laughs> and they think, oh, but this is cool. But it's actually an art form, and it's a uh, it's, uh, it's something that is able to, to be on stage and to be performed. Well, I mean, I think it's uh, the nice thing in this project is that, uh, that I can stay myself, I can be a contemporary dancer, and I can dance with the b-boys who are b-boys. We can actually meet and have a dance conversation <laughs> in, uh, on stage. Downtown Denver has kicked off the season with the annual Downtown Denver Grand Illumination event. As of November 25th, Downtown Denver's winter program lit up the city, county building, and Union Station. More than 585 energy efficient LED lights and 2,000 feet of LED rope transformed the city and county building. The tradition of lighting Denver city and county building dates back to 1926, when Mayor Ben Stapleton allotted $400 to be spent for the decorations of the building, which at the time was on 14th and Larimer. The brightly colored illumination light ex exhibition will run through the end of December. 
Well, Netflix has finally announced on Wednesday that users worldwide can now download videos to their mobile devices instead of streaming them over cellular data. Netflix has said that the update will only be limited to the mobile app, but will be available to both iOS and Android users. With this new feature, a download button will appear next to the play button for select movies and shows, which will allow users to save content to their watch later on to watch later when internet connection is slow or unavailable. Netflix says it plans to expand its ever-growing list of shows for their users to download. For those of you student gamers and anyone who's looking for a fun way to stay healthy, there's a new style of video games that has everyone on their feet. The VU VR treadmill is now a part of the gaming world. It is a 360 treadmill movement. Run, jump, crouch, though it has functions of a typical treadmill. It does not appear that way at all. Instead, it is a hexagonal platform that needs specific shoes that have sensors on the bottom that can track your every move. For now, it works with PCs only, but the company plans to make it compatible with all systems. This new method of gaming is available for the pre-order price of $700. So let's go ahead and take a look at this weekend's weather. This Saturday, it looks like it's going to be 47 degrees with the wind speed of 5 to 10 miles per hour as well. Um, if you have any plans, it would be a good time to go out and do them because it's not snowing. Uh, in the tri-state area, you can see it's mostly in the 40s. Um, in Conifer, 36, so it's going to be a little cold. On Sunday, you have 51 in Boulder and the rest of the tri-state area in 50s, 52 in Denver. That's what we mostly care about. So it will be a okay temperature. Um, if you take a look, we have a high coming its way in Denver, and that's what's keeping us dry right now. Um, soon we will have a low coming this Sunday, and that's what will give us our cold front and will produce our snow that will be coming to us this Tuesday. This Tuesday it will be about 26 degrees with snowfall, and then you will have on Friday, 39 degrees, which will be the warmest of next week. So I think you should just leave now for forecasting snow, because that was pretty rude. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I hate Colorado. I mean, I love Colorado, <laughs> but I hate snow. The changing I hate weather cold. is an interesting fact yeah. living here. <laughs> That's definitely true. I think I'm going to have to bring out some uh, jackets, and as much as the Colorado weather, I love it. But, uh, but I with like, like Christmas coat. Colorado comes lots of fun holiday Absolutely. things to do. That's, that's true. <laughs> it, and uh, President-elect uh, Donald Trump, he's unveiled his plans to make America great again. But after the break, we're going to show you guys uh, his plans to make Christmas great again. We'll be right back. Colorado's weather is always changing. We're student meteorologists trained to keep you safe. We have the latest weekend forecast and help you prepare for the week ahead. You can watch our weather forecast on Facebook, Twitter, MyMetMedia.com, and on TV. We help you stay weather aware. The beloved TV classic soars off the screen and onto the stage this season. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the musical. See all your favorite characters from this TV classic come to life live on stage. This gleeful musical take on a holiday favorite will go down in history as a smashing hit. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the musical. The day I saw Rose, I told her, baby, I don't want to marry. I just want to be your man. I told him if he wasn't a mankind, then move out the way so the mankind could find me. That's what she told me. <laughs> You're blocking the view. Move out the way so I can find me a husband. Corey got recruited by a college football team. It ain't going to get him nowhere. If he be like you in the sports, he going to be all right. Where did it ever get me? Hauling other people's garbage. How come you ain't never like me? Now don't you go through life worrying about whether somebody like you. You best be making sure they're doing right by you. He wants you to say, good job, son. That's all. Ain't nobody gonna hold his hand when he get out there in that world. Everything that boy do, he do for you. It's not easy for me to admit that I've been standing in the same place for 18 years. Well, I've been standing with you. Don't you think I had dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? Hey there, thanks for watching EMET, I'm Vinny Thomas. Once again, it's that wonderful time of year, so let's check out some festive and fun Denver dues for the weekend. 
There's no better way to join in on the holiday spirit than a trip to Denver's annual Chris Kindle Market. Grab a treat, beer or cocoa, then listen to a choir performance while you shop for gifts in this outdoor fair. Head on over to the Denver Art Museum for the latest fashions from a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars and the Power of Costume will be on display until April. Santa's making an appearance at the Cherry Creek Mall, Bass Pro Shop, and Larimer Square this year. So be sure to tell him what you want for Christmas, if you're small enough to sit on his lap, that is. Hey, some of us are millennials and others are just millennials at heart. Take a look at this viral vid. These old friends might just steal your girl if you're not careful. These gray-haired squad is hip to the new bottle flipping trend. Broken hip, that is. With moves like that, Grandma won't be run over by a reindeer anytime soon. Okay, I'll admit it. I have a big head. Sometimes it can be difficult to take a good selfie. Luckily, there's a new gadget out there which guarantees a great selfie angle no matter how weird your head is. The Air Selfie is a teeny tiny camera drone that stores away in the back of your phone and flies up to take a picture. You'll have to wait a few months to get the Air Selfie, but it's available for pre-order right now. Do you have too much money in your pocket? Boy, do I have a gift idea for you. The Donald Trump campaign is capitalizing on its popularity by offering a luxury Christmas tree ornament, causing quite, quite an uproar on social media. The small red base, Make America Great Again baseball caps will run you about $150. Don't worry though, they're worth every penny. In true Trump fashion, the ornaments are trimmed with 14 karat gold. The holidays are starting off on a much darker note with a new thriller starring Halle Berry. But this kidnap story of a mother's mission to save her child may never make it to the big screen. The movie is set to release today, but its production company, Relativity, is declaring bankruptcy. It's a bummer. So can this mama bear save her cub? We may never know. Changing focus from current presidents and first ladies to the most iconic one of our past, a new biopic drama following the life of Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis comes to theaters. Critics say that this is Natalie Portman's most psychologically demanding role yet, playing the part of our 35th First Lady who tries hard to stay strong in front of a nation after the assassination of her husband, President John F. Kennedy. Holiday parties can be awkward. Here are some fun facts to help you spice up any dull moments with your coworkers. Santa technically has 31 hours to visit the houses of about 823 children every second. Moving at this speed, Santa's reindeer would instantly burst into flame and vaporize, leaving a sonic boom and reindeer ashes in their wake. Maybe that's why Rudolph's nose glows so bright. Happy holidays. Thanks for watching EMET. Sports is next. Robinson stops on a dime, now to Cortez, the Cortez beating, and count the bucket, and no foul. If you can't get enough of MSU Denver sports, then you need to tune in to the Roadrunner Review. Get into the game with exclusive highlights, interviews, player stories, and of course the top plays that will have you jumping out of your seat. You can catch all the action on Altitude Sports, Comcast CET, and at RoadrunnersAthletics.com. Hey, nice job, great spot. In Neraria, everything changes. There's always new things to see or do. In your Noticiero Temet, we'll tell you all you need to know about our school. News about our region and beyond our borders. Every Friday morning at 10.30 through Comcast Channel 58 in Denver and on live stream in iTunes or Android. Noticiero Temet, the student voice of MSU Denver in Spanish. The playoffs are over and the RMAC Championship is here. Metro State hosted the 2016 RMAC Volleyball Championship and what a night it was for one team. MSU Denver winning undefeated in the RMAC at 18-0 to face off against the Carter School of Mines coming off a convincing 3-2 win over UCCS. The Roadrunners find themselves down early as Monarch beats Michaela Smith for the kill. Not backing down as Brandy Tor did everything she could, but point to the Mines. Ryan Herdman giving the Roadrunners some light as she slams this one to the back corner. A great dig by Lopez, set up by Larway, and Rocket from Sturgis. A great team effort for the Red and Blue. After a net violation, the Roadrunners will take set three, but are still down by one. 
The fourth set will be the final set as the Ore Diggers defense stands strong and blocks the attempt for the final point. Cotta School Minds will shock the Roadrunners as they take the championship. MSU Denver hosts for the second weekend in a row as they take on Davis and Elkins. The Roadrunners coming in at 3-2 look to slide past the 0-4 Senators. Davis and Elkins takes an early lead as Doman goes up for the 3, rebound Van Rique and hand right back to the Senators for the layup. Andre Harris showing his speed as he blows past the defense and slams this one home. Senators down the other side and what was that? All alone and he misses. Nonetheless, Parker gets his own rebound, 4-2. Detch from the free throw line and it's good. Detch again from behind the 3 and he's on fire. Bracey Davis taking it down court and driving it to the hoop, lays it up for two. Detch with the assist will end his night with 21 points and the Roadrunners win 101 to 86. We were fortunate to start, um, you know, uh, finishing some plays on the offensive end, you know, and um, I thought they fatigued a little bit and started missing a couple jump shots and we got to go and transition a little bit and loosen the game up. MSU Denver comes into tonight's game, one game above 500, looking to win both games over Thanksgiving break. The Roadrunners at 2-2, two 3-2, and two, three and two, take on the 3-2 and two Bears of Broomfield College. Game tied at 10 and Buna Makeda giving thanks as he stuffs this one to remain tied. Down on the other side of the court, hey, no one said the shot had to look good as long as it went in, right? Cameron Williams for two. One, two, and Howard for three. Keda up and no, too soon. Going for a second block, Safi for two. Enrique past the defense, slams this one home. Intercepted by Enrique, bumped to Williams. Williams passed back to Enrique, redirected to Howard for the layup. Enrique with three will end his night with 21 points and Roadrunners win 79 to 73. It's really good to get these two wins here on the, uh, our home floor. Now we have to start looking forward to the next home games. We have two, two games next week. We've started the RMAC and we're really excited about it. So the uh, Roadrunners basketball team will host again for the third time this weekend. And what a, what a uh, home trip they've had so far. So they play tonight and tomorrow and we wish the guys luck. That's pretty amazing, and that layup was also really cool. But you said they were playing on Friday, right? Yes, today and then uh, tomorrow. And Seems so. like they've really been heating some things up yes. in the court. Charisma, do you think the weather is going to heat up as well? Definitely not. Oh. Yeah, so for your five-day, we have really cold 20 in the 20s. And then on that Friday, you will be in the 39-degree area, close to 40. So. Slightly warm, slightly chill, not bad. Not what we're looking for, though. True. Okay. It's not California. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for now. For all the latest campus news throughout the week, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit our website at mymetmedia.com. Thanks for watching.